Hello again, and welcome back to the Satellite Tutorials. This time, I'm going to re respond to a question that has been asked to me multiple times by now. How do you take a Super Nintendo ROM file and turn it into a Satellaview download? Alright, before I do that though, I would suggest you read the two URLs I have written down in orange here. They have some technical... The first one has some technical information regarding Satellaview headers. That is some stuff you're going to need to know before you go into this. At least so you know, kind of know what you're doing to better detail and can fix it if something screws up. Because it's kind of difficult to go through minute details in a tutorial video. The other URL is a download for Yukon64. I would suggest you download the version for whatever operating system you use. My setup right here that I show on the screen has the front end as well as the WinGW version all already set up for the convenience of the stream. But yeah, I would suggest you learn how to use Yukon 64 before you get any further into this. Anyway, let's start by picking out a game. There are some limitations to what games you can pick out. To begin with, they must be able to fit in an ADA memory pack, which has a file size limitation of 1024 kilobytes. Hopefully that's well understood. That means games larger than F0 won't fit. That means, unfortunately, many of the games that I've been requested to try to convert won't work. You won't get any Mega Mans. You won't get Chrono Trigger. You won't get Mother 2. But you still got a decent amount of selections to choose from. Um, some other limitations, hopefully these are more obvious... Um, no expansion chips, and if the game has some copy protection put in, it is possible the conversion process may trigger that copy protection. I'm sorry to all those people who wanted me to convert Plock. Anyway, let's begin. Let's start by choosing out a ROM. I have one on, well, I have a few on hand here, actually. Let me see which one I'd like to pick for today. Generally, what you'd probably want to start off with if you want to begin practicing this <coughs> is a low ROM, so ROM that more or less matches what I described. Alright, so let's try... Oh! Kirby's Avalanche. Let's see. Kirby's Avalanche should be a simple one because all the P Puyo Puyo games were already on to tell of you. Okay, so I jumped right to the address of Kirby's Avalanche's um, internal header. Now, here's where you'll probably need to read that article I read up above to figure out what I'm doing here. I... these... <clears throat> Let me start off from the top. Starting from 7FDO. I'm blanking these four. They're all FF. This one's 0, 0. This one can be a different variety of numbers, but it's usually safest to go with 0, 0. These two are FF. Let's see. Uh, I'm getting a bit fuzzy from here. This one's FF. Frio. Oh, oh. Let's see if I got that correct. Yeah, that's about correct. See, I did a quite a few uh, bite changes that are kind of hard to really notice. I mean, understand what's going on at first glance, but. Okay, let me try to explain in brief detail. These first four are blanked out because they are file allocation data, and those need to be filled in. This is uh, basically the DRM data, and I have that set at 0000, so that it's disabled, more or less. This is date data, and this is going to be filled in when the, during the download process. This is the low ROM, this is the ROM settings, basically. And this is Maker. 
I believe, and it is also blanked out because the download's gonna fill it. Anyway, for the time being, I'm gonna save this, but there is an important thing I'm gonna need to do. I'm gonna need to go into Yukon and figure out the checksum that I need to put in. Now, for this, I need to make sure Yukon is reading it as a low ROM BS dump. So, if it's not doing that right off the onset, force it to. I have see right now I have it set to basically force read low ROM file is BS dump. So let's go to my Kirby's Avalanche ROM, which I renamed Kirby A.BS for convenience. <coughs> And there. Of course, it'll tell me the checksum's bad. Now, you might think from here you'd want to go to fix checksum, but what that's going to actually do, I think, is turn it into a regular SNES checksum. I've tried this a few times. It never worked for me properly for some reason, so I fixed the checksum by hand here. So, let's see. E4BB... 1B44. Four, four. Like that. Basically going in reverse. Alright, now let's save that again. Let's make sure Yukon didn't check, like, change anything crazy. Okay, and that, and that all went well. Then, yeah, that should be how it looks, more or less. Checksum's okay. Inverse checksum's okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, well, set up a Satella Wave download. So let's get rid of all this. And bring back up the more classic setup here. Alright, so... Here is the same setup from the last stream I did. I mean, the last recording I did. Ugh. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Anyway, let's go to add the Kirby ROM. Kirby's A. I'm just going to call it Kirby's Puyo Puyo because that's total what it is. Alright. And I'm gonna do a data dump into the sat data directory. Just like usual. Alright. Now... Here's where I check to make sure I didn't screw anything up. Let's try downloading it. Now, if I did this all correctly, this should download. I'll let it download at the slow speed to build tension, which will probably screw me over. Let's see.
All right. Moment of truth time. <coughs> we got to boot up. This is it. This is Kirby's Avalanche. Just ported to Satellview. Obviously, it's basically the same as the version that is on the regular Super Nintendo, because I didn't change anything else. Let's, uh... Oh, I can't turn sound off, can I? Oh, well. But yeah, I'll play a bit of this on the stream, just so everybody knows it works. I guess I'll have to shut off the radio. No, I mean the wind amp. Give me a moment. That's it in a nutshell. So, let's reset, go back to BSX. By the way, if you want to put in a normal Satovia download and put it up as a download based on the roundups that are currently available, you basically just do the same blagging out, but you don't fiddle around with any of the other values or the checksum. Just, you know, the play allocations that and the date and the maker need to be FF'd out, basically. It's otherwise a similar idea. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This was actually shorter than I expected. Next time I do one of these tutorials, um... Wait, did I forget something? I think I forgot to go and enable the hydrant. Yeah, I forgot to tell you what happened when I enabled Hydrant last time. Let's just let's just end the stream off with that. Wait, why is Hydrant Access not working? If I have it enabled on here, give me a second. Let's maybe Hydrant Access doesn't work with Mr. Money. Let's see. Sometimes these NPCs can screw around. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not getting the hydrant access. Let's reset. Oh wait, it's telling me there's no signal detected. What's happening there? Hmm. Maybe I need to have at least one NPC enabled. Let's see. Let's try random ones. It's also possible to say that a thing is screwing up again.
Yeah, it's the sat data directory is probably screwing up again. Oh well, I'll probably just have to refre refresh everything again. <laughs> I swear I have to do this like every couple times I write to it. Can be rad or bothersome. Okay, for some reason, even though I did that, it's not auto-updating. And it's still telling me there's no signal detected. Uh, the end of these streams always has me debugging something rather than... Hold on, let me, uh... Close that, then delete everything, then put it all back in. Yeah, I apologize. The tall wave is, again, it's, it's still a work in progress. It's still buggy. There we go. And there's a hydrant. Anyway, yeah. Uh, was I doing anything else here? Oh, yeah, I guess I could show you, uh... Do I have a fishing rod on, honey? Yeah, well, now I do. Okay, let me show you fishing. Let's see, Fisher, Fisher Take. It's probably meant to be Take, but I'll just call him Fisher Take because he takes like fish. So if you talk to Fisher Take here. And if you had the fishing rod, you will immediately begin fishing. It's basically all RNG at this point. Yeah, I got a fish. You'll usually get like 500 or 1,000. Although sometimes you can catch a big fish and you'll get 10,000, but your fishing rod will break. This is basically the primary way to get money in this when there's like nothing else to get money from, besides gambling downloads. Anyway, yeah, that's enough of that. Thank you all for watching.